Toys, Comics, Games, and Entertainment. The Toy Time Machine Radio Show. I don't have friends. I got family. So this is our first ever radio broadcast. I want to thank everybody here for tuning in. I appreciate it. This is going to be a weekly uh, serial, and I'd love to invite everybody to. um, If you are into pop culture, memorabilia, movies, anything like that, please don't Mm -hmm. hesitate. Contact me, Lance, at the Toy Time Machine. I'll be happy to somehow get you involved in the show, whether it's bringing us water or rubbing my feet (laughs) or coming on and chatting with the group a little later in the show we'll be joined by our voice actor celebrity guest and author of willow's run robert boxdale so we've got uh, we've got a, a great group of misfits here and we've got a great cast coming up every week so much more so stick around and I'm going to make, I'm going to make us sound so good. I'm going to put intros in there. I'm going to put, I'm going to splice in some, some sound effects. It's going to be good. Whoa. So first, okay. I'd like to introduce my friend, Billy. Uh, he's a teacher yeah. from uh, Winnipeg area, Winnipeg, right? Winnipeg. Area. Well, I'm from, from Nova Scotia, but like now Winnipeg, I guess near Winnipeg. Uh, he was just down in Ottawa. For a whole month, spent it with the toy crew, the toy time machine crew, came out to the convention, Fanaticon, and just stole the show as Batman. Um, Yeah, what a great summer. I got to tell you, we had lots of things happen from hitting up the conventions to going to Montreal, hitting some toy stores there, seeing SmackDown, WWE SmackDown. So much, man. And we only get to do this about once a year. Let yeah. people know what you're an enthusiast about, what you collect, and what you picked up over the summer. Oh, yeah, yeah. So mostly horror, anything nostalgic. Like, I literally have a, a, a TV in my room and uh, a bu- bunch of VHSs, t- like old school wrestling, horror, um, anything like that. So anything, any pickups like that, uh, I'll try to get. Usually, like, masks and anything, like, old school stuff like that so this summer uh, in ottawa what did you pick up any uh, new pickups what did i pick up um well I, I put together a few things for cosplay i do the cosplay thing too so i picked up uh, like this long leather jacket for maybe like a crow thing down the road um that, that would be cool and then i picked up like that i had an eddie monson vest made from stranger things i might rock that you know yeah, that's dope. When you're you're a cosplayer, you've got a lot of masks. How many masks do you have? Well, like two or three bins full of like everything, masks from costumes from Jason to Freddy to Leatherface oh, yeah. to to like mostly horror. Um, I got some wrestling ones. I've, I've done the Macho Man at the first Fanaticon, I think so. The girls, the girls find this stuff attractive. Are they? Uh, are they? Are they? Uh, <laughs> You know, are they excited by no, this? No, that's the thing. That's the thing. You gotta meet. You gotta meet girls. You gotta meet chicks that are like into it as well. Like, you know, like mm-hmm. they, or like you know, then then they're cool with it. But like, I my ex, my ex, she she loved it, but she would make me uh, do a joke like, you should have a separate room and like keep the door shut for all your scary shit. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, next on the show. I- well, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Want, that's I okay. I want to know about him too. So. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, everybody wants to know about Flax. Flax. Uh, this Flax. is Dana. Flax. Flack of Flack. So, uh, hello. Uh, <laughs> this is Flax from Flax Collectibles. Flax. No, Flax. 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 Why is it I always say? Why do Flax. I always say Flax or Flock? Everyone, everyone says Flax or yeah, but it's Flax. It's actually Flacko, but I go by Flax. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what does just okay. flock, like flocks? You know, like flocks. Yeah, where did that come from? That's the question. I, oh, where did that come from? Yeah. Uh, so my 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 nickname for like half my life has been Flaco, which is uh, Spanish for skinny. And oh. my best, yeah, my best friend is spelled like my old best friend. He's he's uh, Spanish, and his mom used to call me our little Flaco. Not to be not to be confused with Waka Flaca. <laughs> no man, everybody does that, bro. Everybody does that. You know, for the longest yeah. time, I never even listened to Waka Flocka just because every time I said Flocko or Flock, they're like, "Oh, like yeah. Waka Flocka." I'm like, "Nah, yeah. no." Yeah. <laughs> Yo, you know what? You know where Waka Flocka got his name from? Uh, like I don't know. It sounds like birds. 
Okay, no, it's you know the Muppet on on Muppets, Wazzy. You know he goes waga 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 waka yeah, waka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's great. That's where he got his name from. So that has nothing to do with Flaco. Right? Are, you, are you Spanish or no? You're no, I'm Lebanese. Oh, okay, I got some of that in me. Oh yeah, I'm I'm uh, half Lebanese, half British. Flox has been a rapper for about uh, how long? How long have you been rapping? Fifteen years. Fifteen years. Holy yeah. shit! Yeah, I got signed when I was eighteen over in uh, BC in the West Coast. Wow. Yeah, and then I've been doing it ever since. Wait, are you I'm, from, I'm, I'm actually signed right now. I'm signing to a label right now. Uh, State Platinum Records. Okay. That's the same. That's the same record company. The, the label. The label's owned by my homie uh, Bully Zone, and you met him before. He's like the big dude with all the tats that comes to the shows. And yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, okay. Wow, that's yeah. quite the operation. And yeah. have you have you ever you've been rapping for fifteen? So that kind of comes with a culture, right? But you you know, uh, fifteen years in the rap game, you you got to have some crazy stories. You, you've ever been inside? Oh, uh, like like locked up? Yeah. Lance <laughs> 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 yeah, um, is officially yeah, the up. whitest the whitest dude on the radio shows. So. Yeah, yeah. I, was locked up. I was locked up for a minute, man, like a long time. Yeah, yeah, it. okay, and. uh you know, you you know, you sell some drugs here and there, I know. Next question. <laughs> like, okay, well, well, if Lance, you had, okay. Lance you must have sold something. At some, you know, you've been Lance inside. So, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> now you've moved it. into now you've moved into plastic crack. <laughs> You're, yeah, pushing, sure. you're pushing the you're pushing the uh the plastic now uh, plastic. so how is that like what what do your buddies in the the whole rap game think of you um making toy toys cool again you know <laughs> Bro, it's, actually, it's, it's actually crazy man. Like, everybody i know like i actually know so many people now who have collections that i never knew about until i start made till i made this shit public yeah uh so many dudes would hit me up with like like guys who were like my everyday homies who I've never never talked about it, none of that, you know. And like yeah. these guys all came out the woodwork as soon as I like went public with yeah. it and start started really doing it. They're like, oh bro, I collect too. I'm like, what? For real? They like, talk about it. You couldn't really talk I about it. Yeah, like I basically made it cool in like the in the streets, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, bro. Yeah, that's Rams. That's, that'll be Lance's rap name if he ever makes an album. I've, Lance, I've been Lance, doing this. I've been narc. uncool for twenty years. So <laughs> okay. Lance, Lance the narc. <laughs> oh shit! Oh man, uh, we've got our uh, friend from Red Cup Reviews in the U.S. Oh. Our New York uh, counterpart, I guess you would say. This is Rob Banks. What's up, Joe? So we've got. A guy that robs mm -hmm. banks, a guy that's pushing plastic crack. <laughs> we've got a, a cosplay fetisher. Yeah. We've got we got a full house right here, you know? So what's popping? What's popping? What's popping? Yeah. What's popping? Our so, New York our New York affiliate over here. That's right. Yeah. Hey. Just making some coffee, guys. Are caps <laughs> still yellow in New York? <laughs> 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 trip, bro. Give me a little bit about yourself, if you can, my friend. Well, Bronx born and raised, recently moved to Westchester, New York, and uh, that's, that's where the X Men are from, right? Yeah, yep. Westchester. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, most recently, I mostly collect one six scale stuff periodically, a little bit more, a little bit less than I used to. I'm getting into Legos now and I got, I'm like a big Mezco guy. That's what I use for my, uh, Lego does I, never, it, it just doesn't yeah, Mezco, stop. Bro. Mezco's where it's at, man. Me too. I got rid of all my six inch stuff and just went balls deep into Mezco. But if they don't release anything then it's like, what am I doing? <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there's really there's there's it. something about having a 12 inch, but when you can manage <laughs> more on, six right inches in a detolf, it's it's a lot more exciting. <laughs> you know? Here's the uh, there's this quick setup. Right Holy now. shit! So everybody out there in Radio Land, you guys can't see this. You've got a video view of Red Cup Reviews collection and it is outstanding lots of six scale collectible figures mezco i don't see the lego in there but he's got some really nice uh, uh poster art 
beautiful. I'll show off some of my shit. I oh. Yeah, I got Michael over here. Oh, uh, he's showing got, Michael Myers mask. I got Captain Kirk over here. That's oh, the, that's that's the original <laughs> mask that they oh, used that's what, uh, for Michael that's what Myers. Michael Myers into. Yeah, and, and, uh, yeah, yeah. I got a, I got a bunch of, I got a bunch of fucking shit. I got some Slipknot masks and shit in here. Slipknot. Oh shit, Slipknot. Yeah, I got they get this this I got oh, this one. Sean's mask, that's dope. Lance, by the way, I'm sending you so you needed a Freddy glove, so I guess I'm gonna send you the one that I made actually. Oh, but, I remember you making that. That that how many hours did that take you to make that Freddy glove? It took a while. I I'm gonna make I'm this is made of all plastic. I'm gonna send, I'm gonna mail this to you. Oh, oh that's so nice. nice. That's a really nice gift, man. I like that glove. I know how much work you put into it. That's actually nicer than the costume glove I have in my 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 collection um robert england the guy that played freddy krueger he was just at fan expo in toronto yeah and you know how much wow. this guy was charging per <laughs> autograph it's more than i thought it was going to be it's 140 dollars 130 bucks i just seen that nefarious took a picture with kevin smith over there at fan expo yeah how much did that picture cost him i don't know it looks like he got a selfie with him so i don't think it really cost him or maybe maybe he paid i don't know selfie selfie is half price Oh yeah, probably like eighty bucks. Well, I'm, I'm meeting, I want to meet Bruce Campbell's going to be in Winnipeg this year, so I want to try to get. Okay, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try to come down to Winnipeg. I'm going to come and see you. I think. Yeah. I'm going to jump on a plane. I'm going to come to my first Winnipeg Comic Con. I'm going to do that. Yo, how are those? Orders? I'll show, them. I'll I'll show you. I'll, I mean, Red Cops in New York, so you know, you know, fucking New York is crazy. Bro. That New York Comic Con, bro, is so fucking overrated, man. Like, really. You know I mean? It's like it looks off the hook, but it's so off the hook that like it just becomes a giant headache. You got no 100, like one hundred fifty thousand people on a yeah. Saturday bumping into each other. You can't even breathe in the guy. Well, that's yeah. That's fuck that. You know what? Yo, like I, I can only imagine what it is in New York. But at MCL, when we went there, bro, I was yeah. fucking elbowing people out of my way, bro. Exactly. Yeah. It was like yeah. you know what? All, like, these, all these conventions, all fill. You know what? I I hold a show here in Ottawa called Fanaticon. You guys got to come check it out if you're not in the area. Just fly down. I'm telling you, it's worth it. Yeah, my, man, my, man. Room, my room is full of toys, comics, and games. No bullshit. Yeah, so Billy's holding up a Necronomicon. Yeah, I'm going to try to get Bruce Campbell to sign this. My biggest, like what we do once a year, they have this comic convention in um, Mohegan Sun in Connecticut, right? And yeah. this, it's called Terrificon. And it's like a smaller con. I don't know if you guys are familiar with like the old Wizard World cons. Right, mm -hmm. it used to be like a lot more tame and a lot more intimate with the guests, where you could just walk right up to them and kind of just talk. So you don't have to even, you know, like you're gonna pay to meet them officially. You'll get like an autograph, but if you just want to walk by and say, "Hey, what's up, bro? How's it going?" and they'll catch a rap with you, or you could just meet them at the food court. Like it's very, yeah, oh, that's like laid back. Do San Diego and New York and shit, but I mean, I already knew New York is probably gonna be like ridiculously crazy, but. That's a yeah. lot of people go like, yo, much of only have like sixty five thousand or something, man. It was crazy. I just want to go to California and like explore. Yeah, man. yeah, Cali would be crazy, bro. I can't wait to do that, man. Oh yeah, that. thinking, thinking, oh, huh? I think that's gonna happen. Well, in the future. yeah. On the way to, on the way to Montreal, the guys and I were in the car. We're talking about coming up with some kind of succession plan and uh, putting twenty bucks away every week. Yeah, and uh, building a fund so we can go to WrestleMania yeah. in Philly. That'd be so dope. this is something we're going to start doing. Uh, oh, that yeah. was last week, and we still haven't put twenty bucks aside. Just saying. <laughs> well, well, you got to tell me. You got to tell me when you open up the, the account. Well, the account's already open. It's already okay, open. So, so, I'll, so start, I'll do a reoccurring. What I'll do is I'll set up like a re reoccurring e transfer every week for twenty bucks. Yeah, yeah, and uh, just put uh, Donnie's twenty bucks in with your uh, your e transfer too. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm busting balls, man. Yeah. Yo, Donnie's mad famous now, bro. You guys got to check out the um the Comics Gate podcast he does with like Ethan Van Skyver and and oh yeah the famous fucking artists and writers and shit. Yeah, he's hanging out with like the guy who created Pit. He's doing what? Shows with, like uh you talking about the same Donnie we know? Yeah Donnie bro with the beard and shit. He used to do my show with me with like, yeah, okay. Mac. okay. So, yeah. This guy's from uh like you guys are familiar with Comics Gate at all what that is? No. All right no. so there was like a like back when Marvel was trying to like insert uh 
like change all the characters like you know from like one sexuality to another and then you know mm. turn characters different races okay. and stuff to try to generate sales are you talking about our government here in canada <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Trudeau's your boy, bro. <laughs> so, <laughs> he, uh, but so we were doing the show with him, and then for a while I stopped doing the live show. My boy Baz took over and was doing it on his channel. Which yeah, Don. I like Baz. I like Baz. And Donnie winded up getting recruited by these guys from, like, I guess they're comics. They they're, they're comic creators basically. It's like Dale Keown did Pitt. You got Ethan Van Skyver. You got um, the guy who did Superman. I forget their name. Superman Earth One. There's okay. all these fav- guys from Image from back in the day. Uh, Jim wow. Fallon, you know, he did like Nighthawk. Uh, wow. He gets that with Billy Tucci, who happens to be my friend too, but he did like She. So these guys do the same thing we're doing here, but on the comic, like creator side. And Donnie's yeah. like like one of their guys now doing the show and shit with them. What? I don't know. I don't mention any of this. He doesn't talk about that. He doesn't, he doesn't even talk. know who the fuck these guys are. He's like, yeah, I'm doing a show with a bunch of guys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, he's never yeah, he's never mentioned this once. Fucking guy just, these are guys like responsible for creating Image Comics, and he's just like, yeah, yeah, whatever. I'm getting drunk and hanging out with these guys. Yeah, that's what I like about Donnie, though. He'll like, yeah. he won't get shit. He's just like, who? Ah, ah, all right. So we're holding the show. Yeah, that's, true. that's true. In Ottawa. We're holding the show Fanatic on in Ottawa. I go to the train station to pick up our special guest who's done voices for Care Bears. He was beastly. Um, yeah. He was uh, in the sh- in the cartoon Cops. He was long arm. His name is John Stalker. So Stalker. I got him in the passenger seat, <laughs> and uh, I pull up to the hotel, and Billy and Donnie and uh, Chad were just standing outside yeah. waiting for me to pull up. I pull up, I open the door, and I said, "This is uh, John Stalker," and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Donnie goes, what, he's a stalker? <laughs> he's like, oh, I thought his name oh, was John. I thought, you John meant, you know, I thought you meant John's a stalker. It's John Stalker. Sorry, who are you? Oh, I'm John Stalker. Dog. How do you know this fucking guy? Uh, he's a guest. Well, oh, you're John Stalker. Oh, yeah. You ought to watch your mouth in front of the guests, man. See, he's, he's, yeah, we, no, we should have a swear jar. I thought you were doing place. Lance humor like John uh, Stalker. Abby. Like, oh, John Stalker. Because he doesn't. He's just not yeah, in the know, right? He just he goes with it. And Donnie is the the best thing about Donnie is that he's he's just everybody's buddy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know. Yeah. So yeah, he doesn't care. It. He doesn't care if you're Elon Musk. He yeah. wouldn't know who you were anyway. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. he guy. he'd still be asking if you could cover his beer. So. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. If he finds out if he finds out you got some money like he'll, yeah he'll be asking you like five times you know like hey hey like, just come on just I'll, one time come on if you're gonna cross over like i was just thinking of this when when um flocka was uh talking if yeah. you're into like and this is like a hip-hop station or something like that if you're into that i mean i don't know the exact name of it but if you go on youtube and you type in like uh i believe it's uh, like rap versus like Marvel or like Secret Wars and some guy years ago, like I mean like 15, 20 years ago, there's a rap out there where this dude is like taking all the famous guys in rap music like the Wu-Tang Clan and Rakim and all them, you know, Biggie mm-hmm. Smalls and he raps about them fighting Marvel superheroes. Yeah. And he talks oh, about yeah. like it's Secret Wars kind of. Oh, well, you know, Wu-Tang. Oh, I'm going to have somebody well, did that. battle the blob yeah. and whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well, Wu-Tang, Wu-Tang did that, I think, for Secret Wars, yeah. I think that was a Wu-Tang thing. They're they're big into, like, rapping about, like, superheroes and stuff, too, mm-hmm. so. But, um, no, I met Baz, see- by the way. I met Baz, by the way. He's he's a good dude. Oh, yeah. That's- I, yeah, I did it. Me and Donnie did one of his shows. Bad, uh, when I was there at Donnie's, like, we did a, a few episodes of uh, a fucking Baz's show. That's and, like uh, the, that's like my the first person I ever like met became friends with like ever like I was oh, like, yeah. he's, he's hilarious he was like ten and we met <laughs> you know <laughs> he's hilarious though man yeah um, that's my boy we used to be like you know we were best friends and then you know, I moved upstate he moved to Florida so wait are both you guys New York guys or yeah both from the Bronx the oh, Bronx yeah, doesn't yeah. leave you so it's like my mom my mom yeah my mom's from Jersey so you know I got family mm-hmm. uh, I got family over there. Mostly, like on the you know East Coast, everyone's on the East Coast. Like all my relatives, 
Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's more like, like, you're trying to get smart with me, huh? You're trying to get fresh, huh? <laughs> we don't hear it. I don't hear that shit when I talk, but I guess. No, I know, I know. But like everyone sounds like, to me, all my relatives sound like the Sopranos. Yeah. Do we sound like Terrence and Philip to you? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello, Lance. Hello, Lance. How are you? I just thought Welcome to the toy party. time machine. Hi, I'm going to fart. I always, joke, I always joke that Lance sounds like more like Inspector Gadget, but. <laughs> Hello, Penny. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, same back channel. Go, go, Gadget. Go, Gadget, Dick. So, Lance, let me ask you a question. How did you get into like, yes. putting your own conventions on? Like, how do you go from, like, I'm just going to do a, like, a toy comic convention? Like, how did It that... started slow. It started really slow. I'm a fan, like you, like Billy. I wanted to do a convention for a while, so I did a lot of shows. Did the Comic Cons, the Fan Expos. Fan Expo, I think, is the third biggest show in in North America, next to the uh, the New York and the San Diego. When you go to these big shows, you'd be surprised, especially in in like the cities in in Canada, because it's so expensive for a spot. They're not selling them to people who are true collectors or enthusiasts they're selling them to like hair salons and and meat farms and soap soap dispensaries so <laughs> i said man we got to do a show maybe half the space size one third the space size but get yeah. it filled with all of these collectibles all the best toys oh, all yeah. the best games and all the best vendors and keep the price relatively good so my 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 main thing was I have to find a location that's reasonable with price. The location's very important. So found the yeah. location. Then, you know, I've been doing it for 20 years doing flea markets and garage sales and all that. So I've made a lot of friends and and I know which vendors I want in there. And I have no problem saying no to even friends who want to set up if they're not gonna mm. be a good fit. So um I'm trying to I'm trying to keep it where it's just collectibles if it's not related to toys or comics or games or costuming like cosplay masks you know um it's not it's not going to be part of the show so next year we just wrapped up the the third ottawa show and we're we're doing a brockville show which is one third of the size of the ottawa but i just wanted to i wanted to do something for myself too like more for selfish reasons just start scaling so i started really small in 2019 started with three slivers of a big room at the convention center then this show happened and that's four sections more spaces and now we're growing into five so wow. we're taking over the whole ballroom and mm -hmm. it's uh a nice convention center it's it's honestly in ottawa i think the best for the location and the prices are good like you go to you go to ottawa comic con it's like 30 bucks to get in you know yeah and we've we've been lucky so like terrific con like you mentioned it's more low-key uh part of this the experience is we have the guests we have guests not as many as the bigger shows but we have guests and they're accessible, so you can go up and shake a hand. Even some of our guests have been nice to some of the patrons and given free signatures and selfies. And uh, We have one lady who's done all our shows. Her name's Abby Haggard, and she was on You Can't Do That on Television. She was on Care Bears and a bunch of other shows. Teddy Ruxpin. So yeah. she is part of the party gets people excited and takes the the selfies and she's got the bow as it's a it's a celebration for for her booth area so I mean, she welcomes pretty, everybody to come down yeah. to her space and yeah. the other guests have been wonderful yeah. you know uh, it's a thin line right so like you want your convention to be the biggest convention ever right like you're you know a party you, oh yeah this has to have a business mind to it. yeah so you're trying to create the exactly. biggest thing right but at the same time it's a fine line between having like what you're saying a very intimate and also like um it's very important having the, the people that are coming like the fans that are coming to enjoy this stuff to feel like they're almost like they belong you know uh yeah, they can be right. a very the bigger the show becomes it can become very cold and almost too corporate you know yeah yeah well and not just that it's like you you can't there's only so much you can see at those things and then they kind of all kind of start to feel like the same kind of thing but yeah i mean I, no abby was great and she's like i mean I'm, like she's she's from i mean that uh you can't do that on television she i mean she she was on that like the whole 
the whole time. And that was pretty big, like even in the States on Nickelodeon and stuff like that during the eighties and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's awesome. We've had guests like AEW's evil Uno. He was a, a guest at this last show. Uh, He's we've back. had John Stalker, yeah. Robert Boxdale, who voiced RoboCop. Yeah. On yeah. the animated series. And I mean, it's expensive, voices to, get for you know, it's expensive said, to get it's expensive. these guests, but yeah. uh, I've been lucky where uh, the guests have been very, very kind with their time yeah. and uh, generous with, with helping out uh, the community and, and, and coming and doing, doing our show. And we've been, we've been lucky enough to do the show for three years and keep the door price um, exactly the same. My phone died, yo. <laughs> oh, That's okay. Man. That's... Which yeah, show was, was your first there, Flox? Which show was your first, your very first in Ottawa? My first one wasn't even Ottawa, I think it was Brockville. Brockville mm-hmm. Fanaticon? Fanaticon, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I popped his convention cherry. That was my show there. <laughs> I did. Like, yeah. I've, been, I've been doing this for about six months now, like, well, maybe more now, but, like, I started about six months ago, like, actually legit making an actual business, you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah man, yeah. I'm just trying to, I'm doing Comic-Con uh, next week, yeah. or two weeks. You know, well, that's look, he's doing, he's doing the right thing. So, he's getting the right stuff. He's trying different things. If it doesn't work, he's trying something new. Now he's on to doing the even bigger show. So, he got a little taste of what... Um, the bigger conventions are like with yeah. uh, Pop X here in Ottawa with the Fanaticon that he's shifted even to Comic Con now. So he's doing Ottawa's biggest show, and then mm-hmm. he's going to do Montreal Comic Con. So yeah. he's uh, he's all over the map now. So that's that's all you can do. And every time he does a show, it's exposure. So it's crazy to go from doing something that you love for so long, like rap for 15 years yeah. and, uh, and doing hard time to doing, uh, selling plastic crack and yeah. he's, he's yeah. doing it. Yo. Yo, he's gonna, you know what? The thing is, he's got locked. so much, he's got so much fan base already. And like, yo, I've been collecting for like, I don't know, eight years or so. And then I stopped and then I got out the whole thing and like, just doing the collectibles now like i just started back up like i've been going hard with it for like the past like five years maybe but like i don't know i just decided one day to like i was selling off some of my collections just to get more shit and then like i was like yo i like this this is dope and like anytime i went to a convention i always said like yo man this is actually sick and i'm like i'd love to be on the opposite side you know i want to be on the tables doing my thing you know what i mean i was gonna say what's cool is like uh well lance knows uh mel like one of the vendors there pacey from uh, Fanaticon, right? Mills and Marvels. Mills and Marvels. Yeah, I mean, she told me, like, she told me she she was a hairdresser for, like, 10 years, and then she just, like, recently, like, just quit her job and started, like, selling her stuff, like, you know, just, like, selling her collectibles and stuff that she makes. You know, that's what it's all about at the end of the day, just, like, finding a passion. And if you can make money with passion, like, that's it. Yeah, Yeah, you know, that's the thing is, like, the collectibles are so much fun. I've, I've been... I, I wouldn't even say I was a collector. I just bought stuff like crazy. Yeah. Like I never really collected. It's just like I would hoard stuff. It got to the yeah. point where I, I, I had to do some flea markets. And that was a while ago. I did it with Brandon. And man, I cleaned house. So I walked out of a flea market at the Rito Carlton Raceway. This is when they had them there. They don't have them anymore because the, the hard rock bought them out. Yeah, it sucks. Right. Yeah, that place was oh. awesome. But Is when you yeah, walk out of a flea market and you're you got two G's on you for yeah. for setting up for forty bucks, it's pr- it's pretty awesome. So yeah. then I went back and I, I I sold some more stuff and then I bought Lance, a collection. Lance was making, Lance was and, making stripper money. Stripper money. But <laughs> yeah, I'd always buy collections, but man, I was buying collections more frequently at that yeah. point. Yeah, I and sent just a whole keeping, bunch of stuff to you. We met that time doing the facebook auction so this this is this is even probably like maybe six years ago i bought a bunch of stuff off you online yeah Yeah. i told you my uh, game boy and shit yeah the game boy and a bunch of things that's sick yo lance has always been that yo lance is like the luck i swear i don't know where it's like this guy gets this he gets like something just whispers in his head go to value village right now 
I think I've been pretty lucky. Toy, I've been pretty lucky. He's a toy lucky, whisperer. bro, bro. He's a toy I don't know what it is. You're like, you're the man for like toy hunting, bro. Like that's why they gave you the oh, belt. Thank you, man. Oh, we call him. You call him. I call him the toy whisperer. And sure enough, this guy, I see him on TikTok, and he's just popping up everywhere. Hey, this way right here. Da 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 da. You know, I'm like, holy <laughs> shit, I'm gonna buy I see nothing, nothing, nada. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, but you know, like when you when you go and you shoot like uh, ten videos, you only get one thing, you know. But I post one video, it looks like yeah. I've I've I hit it every time. I don't. Yeah, you know, I could be hitting thirty stores, forty stores until I find something, you know, like a cat yeah, you, know, you go off and then you go or right like uh, or like the blank, you know. That was that was a that was a good stuff. Yo, you, you got a you were able to snag a Dick Tracy the blank. It's not the first time, so I've yeah, had three in, in the past yeah, six years. Oh, yeah, man, my phone last winter, it was. I'll send you the video. Here, I'll send you the video. He fa- the video. Oh, oh, oh Flox, Flox phone died again. But yeah, he found it in a random bag of like at a thrift shop for like. I didn't even think bucks. they existed. I remember being a kid and having the whole collection and breaking my mom's chops. Yo, you got to get the blank. You got to get the blank. Yeah. Like, they don't. You can't even get them like on the East Coast, like back yeah. then. Like a, yeah. 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 Well, it's funny because it was a Canadian thing, and I think it like spoiled the the, the movie because you could take the mask off of her, and it showed that that was, that was Madonna, and that came out just before the movie. Our big boy Caprice and his men Mumbles, Flat Top, Itchy, and Influence have called a meeting with Pruneface to get him to join their mob. Searchlights fill the room, and the door first open. It's Dick Tracy and his right hand man Sam Ketchum. Big boy's gang is finished for now, but can Tracy keep him behind bars? Find out. Time from Playmates. So, like, I don't understand. Like, would they not continue that figure in particular? Like, what, what's the story well, behind it? Nothing. Well, no, they couldn't so, because I think, I think it was like, didn't it? Like, it was a, it was a, I think they stopped because they didn't want people finding out that that was that's, the, the, that's exactly what it was. So, they did, yeah. they did 3,000. Uh, it was yeah. a Sears, it was, and it only went to Sears because yeah. they didn't want uh, people to know that it was Madonna. So yeah, they just yeah. they just shipped they shipped out the first run yeah. to the Sears in Canada and realized that that was going to be a problem, some shit like that. But no, yeah, we got we got three thousand. They didn't go anywhere else, so they're they're very scarce. So here I've gotten I've gotten three, two complete, um, and I sold them all. That, that last one I sold, and I don't know why I sold it. You know, here's the thing: is like I have. I have the collection, but now I miss the blank now. But when when the money's in my face, I'm like, yeah, I'll take that. But I don't. I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't do that. Yeah, it's like yeah. pieces like that I'll never get again. You know? Yeah, that's crazy. I thought that that was like a myth when I was a kid. That was like, yo, does this even even exist? I know. It's like one of those things. It's funny. It's those, like, well, yeah, I sent again, you. This guy, this guy I found sent you the video. Was at a Salvation Army. I don't know if they have Salvation Army in the states. Like the yeah, little, of course, yeah. Like the thrift yeah. shops, they have those. Yeah, man, they got like Salvation Army is oh. where I take most of my clothes. Like, when okay, awesome. Stuff. Okay, yeah. So that's mm-hmm. where I find. It. That's where I found it. So yeah, we get a, we get a lot of stuff, but we also get gypped on a lot of collectibles too. Like we, yeah. Yeah. for every say for every like one item that you'll never see, that's a scarce item that you wish you would have. We have the same feeling, but for a thousand items that you guys get. <laughs> yeah. So don't don't feel so bad, okay? Let's shift a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about like movies and stuff. Let's talk about movies. Um, well, I uh, saw best movie I saw this summer was definitely Bullet Train. That movie was like that movie was fun. Yeah, we saw that together, right? We saw that yeah, together. Yeah, 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 we saw that. that was like that was like uh, it was like a Guy Ritchie movie and Kill Bill on a train, like mixed together, all rolled into one. It was great. That's the great. cast was excellent. The whole yeah. time, this one guy, this one guy, I was like, man, I, I love this guy. I want to see him in more shit. Like, what's who's this guy? And then it was yeah. Donnie. He was like, that's the guy that was in the movie Kick Ass. That's the Kick Ass yeah. guy. I was like, oh, it's. Uh, Quicksilver. He's like, yeah. I was like, wow, that's why he's so good. He's excellent in it. Uh, Brad Pitt was 
Brad Pitt's Brad Pitt, man. And I don't know why I don't give this guy enough credit. This guy should be my favorite actor. Why is it that whenever people say, who's your favorite actor? Brad Pitt doesn't pop in my head ever, but he should because this guy is just, he he bangs out bangers all the time. It's awesome. And he's just like, and he's cool. He's just playing himself in a movie. He's just a cool guy, man. I I love Brad Pitt. Yeah. you know what? He's like got. He's got to be at least on my top three best actors. Like, oh yeah, like, list. He's got to be. He's he's in so many good movies, and he's he's awesome. He's awesome. That I mean, movie. Yeah. Well, did you see Bullet Train? No, I haven't. But it it did remind me the trailer of like uh like a Smoke and Aces type movie. Yeah, it was. So like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. exactly. Yeah. So Smoking yeah. Aces, Kill Bill on a train. It's it's yeah. good. Yeah, in Japan, just, you get the Japanese influence. Like you got my, you got the bad, you got the bad guy. Who I'm, I mean, if you haven't seen it, I'm not going to say anything. But um, yeah, yeah, it's no, good. it looks fun to tell. The I mean, what the hell have I? I didn't even see Thor yet. I was told to stay far away from that movie. Eh, it was well, it was see. average for me. It was it was Which like one? It, Thor. Oh, Thor! I like that. Thor was good. It was okay. It was, okay. It was, it was average. Fun movie, for me. man. It's a fun me away. movie. I just away. think everybody, you know, people are saying the same thing. You know, it's it's out there. Is that people have got the Marvel fatigue, the movie fatigue? It's a good yeah. movie. It was a fun movie. Look, yeah, man, I every time it. I every time I see I go through that, like I'm um, like doing a Marvel fatigue thing. I watch like I love the the Spider Man movie. I enjoyed the Doctor. Yeah. I was like, these yeah. guys haven't really disappointed me yet. I, the exception of like Eternals and well, I didn't yeah. really care for Black Widow that much, but I didn't hate those movies either. Like I wasn't like. This is terrible. I was like, ah, just compared to your other Marvel movies, I like those more, you know? Yeah. 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 That's right. But, um, I just yeah. saw on, uh, and I didn't think this movie was coming out this quick because I just saw the ad a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And I'm going through, I'm going through, what is that on Prime? It's going through my Prime and Samit- uh, Samaritan popped up. So that's oh, a new. Yeah. The new uh, Sylvester Stallone movie, Samaritan. I heard some good and, stuff about that. I haven't got a chance yeah, to see it either. I like it. I mean, I mean, Stallone is what, like almost 80. He's like in his mid 70s. I mean, he's still putting out action movies. It's crazy to me. Yeah. And he looks awesome. Like he's broken yeah. in the movie, but even as a broken man, like he looks good, you know? And he looks oh, the part. And the movie's got this good twist that I maybe saw coming. And it's it's a good movie. It's a good movie. Oh, yeah. I like it. You watched, you watched it. Already. You watched it. Eh? Yeah, I just watched it. I finished it last night. There hasn't been a lot of movies lately that I've seen that I said, "Oh, these are shit." Like, yeah. pretty much every movie I've seen in the theater, I just keep on thinking it's a ten. Yeah. So yeah. I've been I've been spoiled I, by the movies I've picked. I saw yesterday yeah. with my daughter. I saw Super Pets. Oh, okay. Superhero Pets. Super Pets. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Dwayne Dwayne the Rock Johnson that, plays Crypto. Yeah, was uh, that good? Super Dog. I really good? liked it. You know what? Yeah. I, I always there's always like there's always adult uh, humor in these kids yeah. movies. It's kind of sprinkled yeah. in there, but they went even as far as doing uh-huh. a beep in the movie, and I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> well, oh, by like, the, there was by a the straight way. up cuss word, and they beeped it in the movie. It was funny. It was funny. By the way, Stallone just got uh, split up from his wife after 25 years. Just happened. Yeah, he just got a tattoo covered up, and he put yeah. the, the dog over his uh, his wife's face. Oh, my God. Because he wanted uh, – so the joke, the ongoing joke is that he really wanted a dog, and she said, no, I don't want to get it. So he got the dog anyway, and then she said, I want a divorce. So he got a tattoo yeah. Of the dog over her face. <laughs> well, well, do you know the story I don't know about how him? real that is? But that's, you know that's that, a meme. Well, it's a meme thing. You know the, well, you know the story about him and his dog right? when he was when he was uh, coming up. You know when he before the first Rocky or oh, whatever. Yes, yes. He, yeah. had to, he, he yeah. was working. You know, he had no money. Or whatever. He was so poor that he had to sell his dog. Yeah. And um, and then so he he uh, he sold his dog for like a hundred bucks, and then uh, you know like and then he tried to buy it back. Um, years and years and years later, and the guy wouldn't sell it or whatever. But eventually, he 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 did buy it back. But uh, that was the dog that was in the first Rocky movie, you know, and that ran with them and stuff. That was Butkus. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. such a that's a that's such a great story too. I love that. Yeah, but, I like uh, Sylvester Stallone. He's kind of kept yeah. his nose clean for like who he is, what he's done. He's you know, yeah. I mean, 
Yeah, I mean, he said he said like you know he's he's definitely an underrated actor and like he paints and rides horses and like like plays polo like he's like a renaissance man. <laughs> there, are, yeah. there are certain actors that I just like. I'll never like when you know uh, Harrison Ford is doing the new Indiana Jones. Yeah, I'm yeah. like people. You know, a lot of people online are like, oh, you know, he's too old. And I'm like, I don't give a shit. I want to see fucking Indy. You know, like yeah, I and it's gotta it's so gotta be Harrison. It's gotta be him. It's gotta be yeah. him. Same thing with Stallone. Like uh, you know, Liam Neeson's another big one for me. Uh, yeah, you know, I just enjoy watching them do things. You know, yeah. acting. Whatever, you know, doing cool shit. I don't care. Uh, Flacco, what are some of the best shows you've seen uh, this week or the past month? I just started up on Stranger Things. That was pretty dope. But uh, the best the, the best one so far was Raising Canaan, okay. which uh, 50 Cent uh, produced it. It's okay. sick. It's, it's like off the oh. power, the show to power. This is okay. like a it's like a prelude to that when he's growing up, like small and shit. It was so sick. Okay. Okay. Raising Nick Cannon. Okay, I'm gonna watch that. No, no, no. Raising Cannon. <laughs> <laughs> sounds, Yo, sounds really Nick good. Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, he is funny. He's funny. He's really good. If you like what we're doing here at the Toy Time Machine, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell to make sure that you get updates for the new uploads. Who we, who we, we got, got in? Uh, we got Mark. Uh, we've got a friend. We've got uh, Mark in the house. Uh, Mark, are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? Uh, hi, Mark. <laughs> welcome, uh, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have we, we have Chip and Dale. It sounds like Snit from YTV. We have Chip and Dale <laughs> in the house. We have Chip and Dale Chip here. Dale, Chip and Dale. Dale. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Mark. This is Batman Mark. He's a Batman Mark. <laughs> oh, there you go. Hey, what's up, man? Yeah, was he, was he at the show? Have you on the show? Is he from Ottawa? So I'll give you a little uh, quick little uh, uh, introduction. Yeah. Uh, Mark is probably one of the biggest Batman collectors and fans oh, uh, Mark. that I've ever met. So... <laughs> Right, right. And yeah. uh, he was actually first in line at the convention uh, this yeah. past weekend. Um, wow. you know, Rick, yeah, at Fanaticon. Now, Mark and I met a couple of years back, and I always, I never forgot him. Um, <laughs> well, I posted some Batman stuff, and he came by my house to pick him up. Uh, and I don't do this for every everybody. I don't welcome people into my home. I'll either meet them somewhere yeah, I was, I was or at, shocked to get myself, at, but yeah. <laughs> at the porch. And we chatted. And I was like, okay, this guy doesn't seem like too much of a weirdo. But why don't you come into my house? No. <laughs> so, no, but he was telling me, he's a big Batman fan. I said, oh, well, you got to come downstairs to my basement. You should see my stuff. Come check out my Batman stuff. And we started talking and Mark told me the story. And it was a really, really sad story about mm -hmm. what happened to his collection. So he yeah. had a huge collection, all Batman. Mark had a fire, and uh, it went up in flames. He lost everything. So imagine you spent your whole life collecting. And, and uh, when he told me that, I felt so bad. And I still haven't gotten another one of these, but I gave him um, the Corgi. It was one of my favorite Batman. I have, I have a big Batman mobile collection i've got over 100 batmobiles and uh, i have a corgi batmobile one of my favorite it was a uh -huh. 66 <laughs> and i remember i gifted that to you and i'd never yes, met yes. you before i never met i never met you before but and i think i remember saying something along the lines is i hope i hope this you know starts off your collection again you know and so since then since i gave you that batmobile did did you start building your collection again? Oh, dude, I mean, yes. I mean, I'm going crazy. I'm single now. That should tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're never, you're never single if you have, if you have Batman in your life. <laughs> yeah, I think that's you know? right. I can chase, chase the way to girlfriend. So, yeah. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. But it's definitely well, grown since uh, me and you uh, spoke way back then. So, yeah. That's right. Sure. Oh, my God. 
I, this is I, I I was like I'm trying to understand Mark, but I was like to, I'm like that voice is throwing me off big time. <laughs> I think my son has something on on this thing of voice <laughs> yeah. thing that I, I ain't found yet because <laughs> he's always oh on TikTok and all of those platforms. Can with you, voice can you uh can you sing the chip, Chipmunks Christmas real quick? <laughs> 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 you know, I always said, I said, hey Lance, I always said this. Like, I, I feel like I feel like Mark, like he has that, like he has that, like Will Smith charisma, where he just walks into the room and, like, you just, he just, like, man, he's like happy to see everybody, and he's like, man, it's it's awesome. Yes, yes. Unfortunately, he's Donnie's neighbor. <laughs> Unfortunately, he's Donnie's neighbor. So yeah, move. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Move. <laughs> <laughs> I love Donnie, man. I love Donnie. He, he's yeah, yeah, we all do. Him. Where is Donnie tonight, anyway? Is he doing another podcast or something? What's he doing? No, he's probably. I don't know. He's probably, probably sleeping. <laughs> he's probably he's sitting there drinking, going, "Am I supposed to do something tonight?" I, yeah, think I don't know. What am I supposed to do? to do tonight? I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, I'm good. Glad I met Mark though. Like, uh, I didn't even realize. Like, I was like, as soon as I found out uh, he was like a huge Batman fan, I was like, oh, just you wait till Fanatic. <laughs> yeah, and you had. Definitely blew me away, though. It definitely blew me away. And, and yeah, did you, you, get... fit, you, fit it. you look like you could be in a Batman movie. Thanks, That's man. Thank, thank you. Thank you. I, I, pre- I appreciate it. Billy, Billy's a big costume guy, so he's got a lot of masks and a lot of. Spends a lot of money on his costumes. He had a three thousand dollar predator costume in my yeah. basement yeah. for oh, so for over a year. Who owned that? I remember when I came to your house and you showed me that. So oh that yeah, that wasn't well, even the whole go. thing. That wasn't even yeah. the whole thing. That was like I had some of my folks, some at Lance's, and then I had some, and I had to like uh, when I had to travel basically to like collect it back all back up, and so I'm. Um, I'm thinking about that for uh, next next fanatic on. So. Nice, nice. That's a good idea. So yeah. Billy yeah. has this Batman costume, 1989 Batman costume. Oh, yeah. And this costume is the best replica you've ever seen live in person. It yeah, looks like awesome. straight out of the 89 movie. It's awesome. <laughs> All right, guys, we're back here on the Toy Time Machine live. We also have a special guest, Robert Boxdale. Robert is a celebrity actor and voice actor and author on this new project, this amazing book, Willow's Run. Hello, Robert. Lance, how the heck are you? Doing excellent. I feel like there's a little bit of deja vu here. I just saw you a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I know. And you were so gracious to give me a ride home. Oh, nice. yes, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and I gave you bananas. And you gave me bananas. And they're yeah, you know, actual bananas. Yeah, yeah you did. <laughs> yeah. And you end up making a banana bread. They're in the freezer right now. They're, they're waiting to make some muffins this week. Um, so, Robert, um, back in the 90s, you start on uh, a series north of 60. <laughs> Yeah, it was actually it was actually Canada's number one series for a number of years. We were doing numbers like nobody had ever seen before. And yeah, tell uh, me about it. it here it, it is, still playing, still in the air, twenty eight years later. Isn't that an amazing thing being part of a project like that? Yeah, uh, yeah, it really is. And, and and you know, there are there are people who are there's like several generations now of people who have, who are growing up, have grown up, or grown old watching this show it's really quite interesting yeah well i'm, I'm 40 so this show was on when i was 10 yeah maybe even younger so mm-hmm. it frequently played on my tv and yeah. Yeah. Uh, i can't i still to this day after 30 years how, how many years is it 30 it's got to be 30 years right? well it is because i think it started airing in in 1992 so that makes it 30 yeah. years yeah yeah I still, to this day, can't get the jingle, the, the opening jingle out of my head. That, that, that song. It's yeah. good. That, that, you're in every episode, too, right? Well, not really, no. I, 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 kind, of, I kind of came in 
um, after two seasons, they, they, they got rid of the first RCMP officer and, and replaced him with me. As the series went on, um, they eventually uh, did really terrible things to my character. And, uh, but they kept the show going for another couple of years after that. Sad. But it show was great. They, they did make a, a, a couple of uh, movies afterwards. And uh, they brought me back for the first movie. Uh, which was awesome. It was really amazing. I never expected to go back there, and there I was. Going from doing stage to TV, movies, you also did animation, voice acting, and uh, you voiced RoboCop. That's pretty cool. It was a really uh, exciting moment in my life and in my career because I was a big fan of the film. When, when I uh, went to audition for the, for the series, the cartoon series, I didn't really expect to get it. I remember getting the phone call um, from my agent saying that I'd landed the part, the actual lead part. Um, I was just over the moon. I, I mean, I remember that day as clearly as if it was yesterday. I don't know if you, uh, you know, meant to do an impression, but it's, you sounded just like Peter Weller, Robocop from the movie. Well, you know, part of that is casting too, right? Um, because I guess they were looking for not sound alikes, but something that would translate to animation that people would be kind of familiar with from the movie. Like, just like you said, uh, I ended up working with him years later and, uh, on, on I, the, I, on the space, it was a space Odyssey movie. Five. Yeah. Odyssey five. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was yeah. a guest star on the show, and uh, awesome. I, I, it was so great to meet him and to tell him that I had I had played RoboCop. He he thought that was pretty cool. And you also did some voice acting for some of her favorite cartoons, like the Uncanny X Men, Kazar, Sauron. What's it like being on a show like that? Marvel. Uh, so after uh, RoboCop, I was basically vetted. Uh, by Marvel because because Robocop was a Marvel production mm -hmm. so uh, they'd had to vet me to to get on I, lots of production companies do that like Disney does that there's a very intense vetting process they want to make sure that you're not some kind of kook yeah they so don't want vetting. you in, they don't want you in any kind of negative spotlight right no that's right they don't because you're they dealing with kids it's kids TV yes mm -hmm. they don't big, want you to be the guy deal. who's running naked through the you know the blue jays game i did go in and, and read for uh for marvel for kazar i think it was and they and they they basically you know showed you this kind of rough sketch but often they'll just go okay give us what you you've got and if you haven't got you know something that they like They'll go, thanks, see you later. Um, and I had seen this other character. Uh, there, was a, there was a piece of paper laying around with this long beaked kind of dinosaur looking thing. Sauron. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, I, so I, I gave them something for that as well. And uh, I think they really liked that. And then they went back and listened to my Kazar and they kind of went, just use your normal voice, but kind of in a heroic kind of way. You know, let's bring yeah. it down a little bit and be heroic. It's your planet. It's your, you know, you're the king of this jungle here. Um, and uh, and 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 I and I got the part parts. Um, so going from voice acting, stage, cinema, you were in a movie with Mel Gibson called Fat Man. It's a cool Christmas movie. Going from something like that to working on a really cool book called Willow's Run. Is this your first book? Yeah, it's my uh, it's my first book. Um, I've, I've been a writer for at least half of my life. I've, I've been writing and, and having published uh, short stories uh, and, and, and micro fiction and flash fiction and stuff in literary magazines all over North America. I created a television series and I was in development with Global for a number of years. Um, and I, I, I guest wrote and ghost wrote and stuff like that. So I've always been a writer um, and a reader. I've released it worldwide in all formats. So it's in soft cover, hard cover, uh, large print uh, hard cover, uh, audio book, and ebook. I narrated the audio book myself. Um, and I had a guy uh, who just contacted me from Portugal recently. And he said, uh, I listen to a lot of audiobooks, and I listen to yours, and I'd like you to do me a favor. 
I'd like you to uh, narrate all audiobooks everywhere from now on. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've listened to any even, you know, nippets of a audiobook. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's been a long time since I've even read a book, but I did get to listen to the sample that's right. on uh, Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, man, did it ever sound good? Thank you. It, well, it is really good. good. I mean, you know, it's one of those things, too, that because I was a voice actor all my life and because I wrote the book and because I've directed, I, 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 I knew what yeah. to do. It's amazing. It's amazing. Now, before we go, yes, uh, can you give me just a quick little um, tease of what the book's about? How about this? Without uh, giving too much away, you know? Yes. OK, well, I, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to give you the little the back blurb. Uh, Alcima the Willow Willoughby is on the run in a multi-million dollar RV stolen from her husband, her very dangerous husband. In withdrawal from pain medication and battling a crippling injury, Alcima almost makes it across the country. Running on empty on the outskirts of a half-forgotten tourist town, she's forced to make a hard moral choice, one that turns her world upside down. As spring storms rage, Alcima becomes caught up in a labyrinth of old secrets. Hiding out in an eerie, unoccupied mansion, she makes a startling discovery that without her intervention, may leave a killer on the loose. But her own past is catching up with her. Staying could cost her the freedom she risked everything to gain. The Willow's time is running out. So there you go. The front cover says, Willows run, nothing stays hidden. Amazing. Thank you so much, Robert. Thank you for being a guest. Always nice chatting. Absolutely my pleasure, Lance. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, good luck with the rest of the, the show and the series. I'll be listening. Thank you. Thank you. Talk to you again soon. Take care. The flax back. He charged his phone so we get at least another three minutes with him. Not even two <laughs> seconds. Two seconds. So listen. 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 <laughs> The, the, the signal was cut. The signal was cutting out for a minute. So, yo, I appreciate coming on this, man. Yo, Red Cup. We're gonna talk real soon. We'll do this again. Lance, you the man. Billy, what's up? Everyone yeah, in the man. comments. I appreciate everybody. Go check out my website, floxcollectibles.com, and join my Facebook group, Flox Collectibles members, and on IG, Flox Collectibles. It's been real. I appreciate everybody. I'm out this bitch. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> all right yo we'll talk soon guys. yeah man i don't want to cut off too, i don't want to cut off again and stuff man I no okay it. all right man thank That's you good, man. Thank everybody you. stay up right bless yeah all man right. love it. yeah man love 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 love. the last nasa message quick i only have two seconds these are my last words <laughs> wait 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 this is for mark wait, wait. Houston, wait. Houston, we have a problem <laughs> this is for mark this is for mark alvin <laughs> <laughs> oh my god but i want to thank mark for coming in and yeah. i want to thank mr red cup review rob banks and you guys i'm a yep. big part to you but uh, it was fun and i hope it won't be my last time uh, sitting in with you guys because this was a lot of fun well you can come in anytime okay <laughs> all right guys have a good night what are we doing on sign offs bro well, I guess so. Uh, where did Billy go? It's just you and I left. Yeah, That's he was okay. Like, fuck it. Irish exit. Yeah, I'm fuck it. <laughs> That's it. This is Outlaw <laughs> Radio. That's very cool. cool. It's very cool. Like it's 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM. And you can listen live. And it's all like, it's all R&B. So I'm going to be a great fit. So. <laughs> Let's talk about toys on an arm. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's cool. All right. Well, I'm pretty sure that everybody tuning in for this show is going to really enjoy it. It's something new. It's something fresh. You listen to the radio here in Canada. You're not hearing any pop culture TV show, uh, radio shows. It's, it's all on YouTube. We're very archaic here, you know. I was just going to say, you guys got radio stations up there? <laughs> We're working on it. <laughs> well, what we'll do is we'll leave this for the night. Thank you so much, Mr. Red Cup Review. Well, this was uh, this was a great first show. Can't wait to do it uh, next week. I can't wait to do it with you either next week, Billy. I can't wait to do it with you. 
and and, and whoever wants to and whoever wants to join in more the merrier um does rob want to uh do it with you and I next week too. Turn into what orgasmic? Con- no, what the hell are you talking about? Whoa, no, I'm talking hey, about doing hey, a toy hey, commentary. Hey, I'm talking about hey, doing. Nah, this is, I'm talking uh, about. Yeah, this, whoa. I, I, don't, guys, I, don't, I don't. I don't bend. I don't bend that way. I don't bend that way. No, I'm okay. talking about talking toys, comics, collectibles, and so much more. Only here on the Toy Time Machine. <laughs> yeah. I want to thank my friends over at did Outlaw it. Radio for giving us this opportunity Buddy. to bring. Pop culture, who lectables to the masses. Thank you. Until next time, keep the toy dream alive and keep your toys on the shelf. Peace.